At this time, I'd like to yield uh, three minutes to the gentleman from Little Rock, Arkansas, the vice chair of the Financial Services Committee, Mr. Hill. The gentleman is recognized. Well, I thank the speaker. That, that sound you're hearing, uh, America, is your alarm going off. It's Groundhog Day. And I feel like Bill Murray because, Mr. Speaker, I, when the alarm goes off every morning, uh, the ranking member of the House Financial Services Committee is off on a rant about the former president. So I think it's important that we stay focused on what we're talking about today. And it's a choice between freedom and something far worse. And the American people know why we're on this floor today. We are on this floor today to support a resolution that denounces socialism. As a boy attending elementary school in Little Rock, one of my favorite teachers was a beautiful young mother who taught us Spanish. And her kids were the playmates of mine during those early school years. Her family had moved to Little Rock, escaping the Castro regime in Cuba that murdered their fellow citizens and took family farms and businesses and systematically destroyed one of the most beautiful, successful countries and places on earth. For me, an early lesson in the cost of freedom. As a businessman in 1986, at the height of the Cold War, I joined a civil society tour of East Berlin, led by the U.S. Army via the famous Checkpoint Charlie. There one saw the stark, cruel contrast of freedom versus socialism and communism. Vibrant businesses, full shelves, full employment in the West, and drab, sullen people in the East staring into empty store windows in buildings still bearing the bombs and bullet scars from World War II. Just three and a half years later, with the fall of the Berlin Wall, I represented President George H.W. Bush as his Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Treasury in helping design and deliver U.S. economic and technical assistance to the citizens of the newly freed countries from socialism and communism, from the Baltic to the Black Sea, creating a rule of law, markets, private property rights, and new banking services. And Mr. Speaker, I keep a piece of that Berlin Wall in my house office. It reminds me of the gruesome fact that the Berlin Wall was built to keep people in, not the other way around, and keep freedom out. Today, some three decades later, one can witness the victory of capitalism and freedom over the authoritarianism and command and control of socialism. People of today's Central Europe want no part of communism or socialism. They know fully the brutality and failure of Soviet-style authoritarian socialist domination. So much so they've opened their homes to Ukrainian mothers and kids, opened their wallets to provide Ukrainians money, military and humanitarian assistance to expel the invading Russians. Mr. Speaker, let's say no to socialism and yes to freedom and opportunity. Now yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from North Carolina reserves. And the gentlewoman from California is recognized. I now yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Velasquez. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Ranking Member. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to this resolution. I think it is important that we clarify what my colleagues on the other side of the aisle believe to be socialist policies. Historically, Republicans have tried to label as socialist any democratic actions that improve the lives of Americans. In 1996, Senator Bob Dole, the future Republican presidential nominee, referred to public housing as one of the last bastion of socialism and called for an end to government-assisted housing programs. Public housing in the United States provides decent and safe housing to 1.3 million families that are working class, elderly, or disabled. This is what Republicans call socialism. The 12-point plan to rescue America that Senate Republicans released last year vowed to stop socialism and shrink the federal government by enacting extreme policies like putting Social Security and Medicare on the chopping block. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich promised that Medicare will wither on the vine thanks to spending cuts to combat 
what Mr. Gingrich dubbed big government socialism. Social Security and Medicare are hard-earned benefits that provides millions of seniors with health care and retirement funds every year. This is what Republicans call socialism. From climate action and public education to affordable care and social security, Republicans classify popular government programs to help working families as socialism. This resolution is a distraction from extremists and nothing more than a thinly veiled scare tactic directed to work voters. Why is it, Mr. Speaker, that we are here wasting our time discussing a resolution about socialism? Guess what? Work on the budget. That's Ladies what you Simon need to Clark. do. And you refuse to work on the budget because you will have to tell the American people Ladies that Simon you intend to call benefits for Social Security and Medicare. I yield back. Members are reminded to direct your marks, remarks to the chair. Cal ladies from California reserves, the gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. At this time, I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Texas, the chair of the Small Business Committee, um, and an advocate for capitalism, Mr. Roger Williams. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, let me ask you this. Are we capitalists or are we socialists? I'm glad to join my colleagues in denouncing socialism in all forms. Socialism is the greatest threat to our economy and freedom and must be defeated. Worldwide, socialism has led to the death of more than 100 million people, has forced thousands to flee in exile, and has turned prosperous nations into impoverished and hopeless nations. Socialism is not winning in America and has no place in our country. We are a nation of opportunity and incentive. And because of those principles, we are a nation of hope where everyone can benefit. What sets America apart from the rest of the world is the drive to reach our fullest potential coupled with a free market economy. It is what makes us the greatest economic engine in the world. The opposite of socialism is capitalism, and I'm proud to call myself a capitalist. Capitalism is about taking responsibility for what you create and making it even greater. It's about going from nothing to going to something. It's about taking risk and getting rewards, not government handouts or freebies. Capitalism is the greatest force in the history of our world for lifting people out of poverty, and we must install this value that we have in future generations. As a small business owner for 52 years, I represent Main Street America. And let me tell you, the implications of what socialism would mean for our businesses is alarming and scary. Main Street was built by men and women who wanted to swing for the fences because at the end of the day there is a desire to dream bigger and to dream bolder, to turn dreams into visions and visions into reality. America must always lead the fight against socialism and communism. We must always defend and protect the principles of the American dream and ensure our future generations have the same opportunities to build something for themselves. We must never forget the tragedy socialism has caused for countries around the world. And I urge my colleagues, everybody, to support this resolution, denouncing the horrors of socialism and imposing the implementation of socialistic policies in the United States of America. America. Bottom line, socialism bad, capitalism good. In God we trust, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from North Carolina reserves. The gentlewoman from California is recognized. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Williams is my friend, but I do wonder whether Mr. Williams views the $1.43 million he received in debt forgiveness uh, was consistent with his views on socialism. I, I don't get it. Now I yield one minute uh, to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Doggett. The gentleman was, from Texas is recognized for one minute. I was prepared to vote for this resolution. Socialism is clearly not the best, best path for America. And who wants to be associated with Stalin and the others that this resolution denounces? Really uh, thugs that were masquerading as socialists. But when the promoters of this worthless resolution rejected the Takano Amendment to protect Social Security and Medicare, their goal became clear. They have a long history 
of rigorously attacking most every new social initiative, originally claiming that Social Security would enslave workers and sovietize the country. And they've long denounced Medicare as socialism. Some Republicans would even privatize the Veterans Administration with its socialist structure of government-run hospitals and employees. It's the system our veterans love. This resolution is the foundation for continued attacks on better, America, better Medicare for more Americans and their attempt to cut Social Security benefits. And like their cult leader, Donald Trump, they use this resolution to attack our allies, Germany and Sweden, time at the expired. very time they are considering cutting aid to Ukraine. I yield back.